this video we'll be thinking about speciation and different two different types of speciation. So uh, we say that a species is talking about uh, organisms that are able to interbreed to produce fertile offsprings. So when you get two individuals that have somehow changed so much that they can't interbreed to make a fertile offspring, that means that they are basically two different species. And in most cases, um, two different species can't even breed at all because of structural or biochemical differences. But the thing is, um, sometimes the, in some very weird situations, they uh, usually in plants that is uh, that is possible where two species can actually interbreed to make hybrid plants. Uh, it's still, again, quite rare, but we do get those examples. Now here we're going to be just focusing on the general terms of when you make two species that can't interbreed. And then we're going to focus on the two different types of them, which basically tells you the ways that they actually uh, segregated. So here imagine we've got one specific habitat and all of the individuals within in that, pop that particular species, that population, are very, very similar. Now one of the key things to remember is in evolution or in speciation, there was, would be some underlying genetic uh, variation within the same population. It's just that perhaps there are certain, because they're all subjected to the same selection pressure, that means there, uh, there would be a particular genotype or phenotype that are more favoured, so that why, that's why most of them would exhibit that particular characteristic. But there will probably be loads of underlying genetic variations that may come up or be more prominent if we change that particular selection pressure. And that is exactly the case in the first type that we're going to think about. Now in the first situation here, it, something might have happened that has created a physical barrier within that population or within that habitat. So for example, it could have been a hill or it could have been a river or an earthquakes, tectonic plate movements that separated the two, the land into two bits, like into two islands. It could be anything, right? But the concept is that there is a physical barrier that has appeared and it separated the population into two different areas. And if they're in two different areas, they would be subjected to different selection pressures. So for example, it could be really cold there and it's really hot there. Or it could be really wet there, so there's you know sea or lakes rather than land, and it's just very dry on the other side. It doesn't matter, but the concept is that they will be subjected to different selection pressures. And if they are in different selection pressures, that means different genotypes or alleles would be more favoured in this particular situation. So in this case, those particular alleles would be more likely to be selected to, and those individuals are more likely to survive and reproduce, passing on that allele until the whole population have the same particular genotype, hence phenotype. In this particular case, they might turn into something like this. So in this case, previously, we've got all of the blue crosses. So that's one particular species, but again, underlying genetic uh, variation. Because of that physical barrier, uh, they are, they, they're, selection pressure didn't change at all, but for those who have drifted on the, uh, the other side might have a very different selection pressure. And those with the underlying genetic, like I said, like I mentioned, those with that specific allele that is more favored in this situation can more likely survive and reproduce. And this has, to, it's important to keep in mind that this might, that this needs to happen over many and many, many generations until when that particular species has changed, that those individuals have changed so much that they are just completely different from the original uh, species. So at that point, then they would be, uh, if they've changed so much that they can't interbreed to make fertile offsprings anymore, that is speciation. So it's not just talking about some slight differences. It, there are differences that have been accumulated over many generations to the point they just change completely. And in this particular case, this is called the allopatric speciation. Now, on the other hand, uh, which is a rarer type of speciation, would look something like this. Now, in this different type of speciation called sympatric speciation, it is a speciation that happens within the same habitat. So previously in allopatric, if we're saying that there is a physical separation, then uh, uh, and they are basically separate into two completely different habitats with different selection pressures. In this case, however, they're in the same habitat, so they would be in the same selection pressure, but there are just certain mating preferences or disruptive selection happening that has caused a new species to arise within the same population or within the same habitat. So they just appeared. 
right? Now, this is probably less likely to happen in plants, but it's it's uh, possible in animals. So usually it would happen in animals' uh, populations where perhaps that, you know, they have a particular preference about who they would mate with, or they would have certain phenotypes that are so different and in two completely different extremes that they physically couldn't recognize each other as the same species. So a way to think about this is perhaps, for example, there could be a particular individual with, a, 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 for example, let's say a bird, right? So this bird has a very long and sharp beak, whereas another bird in this, as the same species have somehow had a mutation or a different allele, and that means that bird would have a shorter and more blunt beak instead of a long, sharp one. And the two of them are the same species and they met up together, but then they simply physically couldn't recognize the other bird as the same species, so they just didn't mate. But they would mate with, for example, this bird with a long beak would mate with another bird with a long beak because they recognize each other, and the bird with a short beak would mate with another bird with a short beak because they recognize each other. And if that carries on over many generations, the other changes, the other differences will also accumulate, and they might go over generations until the point that they have changed so much that a completely brand new species just occurred. So this is an example of disruptive selection, right? Now it could be a physical appearance thing that they couldn't recognize each other. It could also be, let's say, um, you know, mating behaviors are, are not recognized, uh, hence there's a mating preference that leads to sympatric speciation. So again, have to say, have to mention that's Sympatric speciation is quite uh, rare, it doesn't happen that often, at least not as often as allopatric, but it does occur. So there you have it, those are the two different types of speciation. Just as a very quick recap, we've got allopatric speciation, is where the population of the same species has been separated by a physical barrier. And then in the two different uh, habitats, they would be subjected to different selection pressures, meaning uh, certain alleles or different alleles would be selected in those different selection pressures. And if this, if they carry on over many generations of reproducing, they might change, uh, all of the changes would be accumulated to the point where they just become two completely different species that cannot interbreed. So that is allopatric speciation. On the other hand, we've got sympatric speciation where it actually occurs within the same habitat, so they were not separated, but then due to mating preferences or disruptive selection, let's say when they animals couldn't recognize each other as the same species, they don't reproduce, uh, and they reproduce only with those that they could recognize, therefore over many generations again, they might become a brand new species on their own within the same habitat. Selective breeding that humans do to uh, pick different specific organisms to interbreed for certain characteristics is in a weird sense sympatric uh, method of uh, pushing the evolution along. We're not necessarily saying that they would become a completely different species, but perhaps subspecies. But that selection uh, breeding is an example of, could be an example of sympatric speciation if it is done to the extreme. And that is speciation.